everyone. My name is Amrita Chappi. I currently work as a technical program manager at LinkedIn. So I will get started uh, by saying a few words about my background and how I came about to be a technical program manager. And uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of walk through a generic uh, definition of technical program manager and what it would involve in a day-to-day business for a technical program manager. Uh, At any point of time, if you have questions, please feel free to stop me and ask them. Uh, We can also do it offline afterwards if you have any questions. Okay, a little bit about me is I have a background in engineering. So I I have my bachelor's from information science and engineering from India. And uh, I, will, I, sta- I started working as an analyst uh, for the technology consulting piece at Accenture. That's when I transitioned into a program management role there. It piqued my in- interest. So I decided to get a formal education. So I enrolled in master's program in software management at Carnegie Mellon University. And after that, I've been working at SAP and currently at LinkedIn as a technical program manager. So for me, it was really important to transition from engineering to technical program manager. Uh, The story of how that came about is I started working as a QA analyst. And uh, so I used to, uh, you know, basically test for requirements and make sure that we are delivering correct features and services to our customers and, you know, building the product right. Uh, But, you know, as someone who used to see the product once it was already built and was about to ready to go into production, go live, I felt that, you know, I could have more of a say in what goes into the requirements of things. So I decided to transition from QE to a TPM and that's how it came about to be. So a little bit about technical program management. Uh, At any given point of time, if you search for technical program manager, this is the generic job description you will see anywhere. It talks about how you are able to work with multiple teams, how you're going to define the requirements, goals, uh, create a roadmap for your product, feature, or a service. Uh, Basically, how are you going to measure your goals? How do you say you've been successful in a project? And, you know, things like that. But what uh, a job description doesn't talk about is to arrive at that point where you are able to define and measure things. How do you go about the, the basics of it, the details of it? How do you define them? It requires involve, It requires a lot of interaction and communication with a lot of cross-functional partners. Uh, I, could, I could think of a few teams that I work with on a regular basis to understand everything everyone's point of view and then bring that together and build out a big picture of the roadmap and see what uh, where do we need to be in six months in one year and then to be able to zoom in and understand what needs to be done today so that you know we are able to successfully launch a particular product in six to 12 months so some of the teams that i work with are listed here i work with product ui design operations engineering data science security, compliance, legal, customer support, marketing, and so on and so forth. So to be able to understand how each of these puzzle pieces fit in together, that's what a technical program manager does. She should have the ability to uh, you know, understand what the project sponsors or executives need and how do we define the business goals for those and how are you able to translate those into technical requirements and make sure that you get everyone invested and make sure that you communicate that everyone is on the same page and they're working towards one single unified goal. So be, to be a technical program manager, I would say you need to be a kind of an expert in three things. The first one would be the technical and domain expertise so that you're able to jump into conversations and help make the right decisions and make sure that your stakeholders are not blocked and they're getting the help that they need. So you need to be able to understand uh, whenever you go into a discussion, let's say with product or with engineering or with the marketing team, you need to understand what they're talking about and how that impacts the overall health of the project. 
and you should be able to connect them with the right folks and help them understand uh, what needs to be done in terms of processes and framework and make sure that it all gets done smoothly. The next thing that I would say is uh, important for a TPM to know is the business and strategy knowledge. Um, it's one thing to just uh, you know uh, go about the implementation of the product uh, project day to day, but you also need to understand what do the sponsors of the project require and how do you want to convert those into um, you know project requirements into product features, right? For example, let's say your org's goal is to drive a business of $1 billion in the next 18 months. How do you want to translate those into actual goals so that people can start working towards them? So you need to have business and strategy knowledge as well. Um, last but not the least, I would say it's important to have program and pro project management experience so that you know, you're able to coach the teams on the best practices and frameworks. Uh, to be able to help them understand what needs to be done so that you can educate them properly and make sure that they're able to adopt the best practices so that there's no gap in communication and how things are being managed. So these are the three things I would say are important. I, I want to talk about how being technical is important in any conversation. So let's say as a program manager, you're talking about making sure managing the scope, time, and resources that you have at hand. Uh, let's say you're, you're working with the budget of uh, a scope of X number of features that need to be implemented in one year time, and you have Y number of resources to work with. So you need to try and understand how do you fit all of your requirements into the backlog of your agile framework. So you, you try and understand the business goals, and then you try and map them towards the requirements that you have, like how, uh, how is introducing a particular feature going to drive the business, right? So for that, you need to understand what kind of usage metrics do you have? Like you need to understand the data analysis part of it. Like let's say a, a feature like messaging or feed in LinkedIn would drive a lot of business. So you need to understand on an average, how many emails are sent every day, and what kind of revenue does that bring? And how many of uh, the users that are using a particular feature are paying for it versus how many are free? And does it make a difference in seasonality? Like in December or November, right? There won't be a lot of hiring going on. So you don't see a lot of recruiters reaching out to candidates. But then once, uh, the com once all the companies come up with a new hiring budget, they do come up with a lot of hiring uh, you know, initiatives. That is when you see a high volume of messages going out from recruiters to candidates. So you need to understand how the, the business goal and the requirements map with each other. And that's how you prioritize your features. So if the team says, in the next 15 days, we can work on three features. What are our top three features? So as a TPM, you should be able to help and manage the team to prioritize the features and say, why don't we work on this? Because this is driving the highest business and also the customers are asking for this particular feature. Then you go about making sure that for, for that feature to be implemented, do we have all the necessary details done? For example, uh, if you're handling uh, customers private information, you need to make sure that you're compliant with the rules and regulations on how uh, uh, private information is managed. So you need to go through the compliance team, make sure that you're in agreement with them. You need to make sure that you are in agreement with the legal policies on how we are handling the data of customers and make sure that our requirements define that. And then you have to have the UI piece of it, as in how does it look uh, as a feature? Does it go with that overall design map? Does it, does it look uh, good to people who are uh, accessibly challenged? Are they able to use your features? Does this show up in multiple uh, languages where your users live? And are you compliant with all of the global policies that are required to launch this feature across different countries? These are the kind of things you have to talk about and think about and make sure you embed them in your roadmap. Uh, sometimes uh, getting a review and sign off from certain teams might take a few 
days to few weeks. So you should be able to see that and you know predict that beforehand. Like, hey, if we want to have this feature implemented in the next one month, I think we should go and talk to security and legal and make sure that we've got this covered. Those are the kind of things uh, where is where you can use your technical expertise and make sure that you're able to uh, have conversations with the right partner teams and take it from there. You know, sometimes you get blocked when you're working with partner teams or, you know, there are risks that you are able to foresee. So uh, in order to make sure that the project is running smoothly, you, are, you should be able to come up with a risk mitigation plan for all of the risks that you see, like what's going on and how is a particular risk or a change in policy going to affect your day-to-day -day work. And you need to try and identify the right stakeholders who can help you and to come up with a mitigation plan. What are the things actually needed to make sure that we do not get blocked in, in a couple of weeks? So a TPM's role is to basically try and predict things before they happen and you're kind of working behind the scenes to make sure that everything is running smoothly. If everything is running smoothly, that means you as a TPM, you're doing an awesome job and you only, thinks, uh, you only see things that are getting blocked and project is getting delayed and it's not on track. Uh, that means we need to pause and take a look at what we are missing. Now, I can open up to questions now if anybody has any questions about this. Yeah, um, on the chat, uh, Hanal, I mm -hmm. might say the name wrong. Um, do you think a new college grad can apply for the role of a TPM? Oh, definitely. Uh, I know a lot of companies hire TPM interns for the summer and uh, for co-op roles. So my, my first suggestion would be to try and get an internship. So uh, because it's a good learning initiative for you and for you to explore the route, uh, you know, being hands on, whether it's a good fit for you or not. So I would suggest being te technically strong and to you know, gather more knowledge on agile frameworks and what it actually involves in terms of day-to-day -day responsibilities. So you can try with, uh, you can try starting off as being an intern and then see if you want to do this as a full-time role as, or as a career. But I do know a lot of opportunities that are posted for internship or even a rotation programs. I know some of the companies have a TPM or a product management rotation program where you get to try a few different things every three to six months. I think that would be a great opportunity. So do y'all also take the PMP project uh, professional management? Or uh, it's not mandatory, but you know, it's, it's good to have the knowledge uh, formally. And then also, so do you answer to the project management office office too, right? Like, because you talk about risk mitigation and things mm -hmm. like that. So are there historical data that you'll also have to represent or like a repo that you will have to, um, you go to in order to um, facilitate and start up your projects? Uh, no, uh, so as a reporting structure, I do report to the senior director of engineering currently. And uh, so he's my uh, people manager, you know, but we also have a company wide TPM org where we are able to talk to each other, share best practices and see how we are doing things. Sometimes we do find processes that have been or frameworks that have been successful when implemented in certain large projects and we try and adopt them. Oh, wonderful. So one of the things I'm interested in is the, the pathway of growth mm -hmm. that you see that you're going to have as a TPM because obviously, or I don't know if it's not obvious, but is this it? Like, is this the position that you know you're going to become a senior TPM? Like, like, like what, what happens next? Or mm -hmm. does anything really even need to happen next? Could this just be it? Got it. Got it. Uh, so I am going to speak of a general career growth in uh, software industry. So in, in any uh, software company, I would say typically you start off as a TPM, then you move on to a senior staff, senior staff, uh, principal, uh, this, is, this is an individual contributor or an IC growth here I'm talking about. Uh, but if you were to move on to being a people manager along with being a TPM, then you could become a TPM manager who does 
uh, pro project and program management, but you're also, you know, managing the careers of a few people. So I have seen folks grow into a director or a VP role of PMO office, or uh, they do tend to become chief of staff for the companies or for, you know, individual organizations. So those are the two growths that I've seen. Um, but you're always, you know, free to move into another role. Uh, what is unique about being a TPM is, you know, enough of what every role does and you're able to speak in their language, like technical versus non-technical. So it's easier to, you know, kind of slide into one of the alternate career paths. Like I have seen people from product manager move into marketing and uh, TPMs moving into product engineers becoming TPMs. So it's very easy to move back and forth as you have a lot of knowledge and you know how everything works. Yeah. Okay. So then what does success look like, right? Like because of the multiple mm -hmm. projects mm -hmm. you have, it, I guess there must be a metrics for success. Like, and it's because it's a project it has a start and it has an end time. So yes. uh, are the metrics of success uh, because the project was completed, I guess, under budget, and with time left, or are the metrics of success will vary um, according to what you see fit for that project? Yeah, definitely. So there are multiple measures of, uh, you know, defining the success of a particular project. It, and it depends on what kind of project program or initiative it is. So for example, uh, one of the programs could be making sure that you are able to enhance the developer happiness, which is the engineering happiness in your organization. So in that case, I would say, you know, how do you go about defining happiness? Like, how do you want to measure it? So currently engineers are having a very difficult time because they don't have the right resources or knowledge to implement their work. Then in that case, you want to understand, is this a tools issue or do you think they need training, they need more knowledge, or do they need more support? Uh, or is it the infrastructure that is down most of the time, which is not enabling them to actually do their work? And you want to understand if there's a significant amount of technical debt that's stopping them from actually doing their work. So you want to uh, come up with uh, key initiatives that you define at the beginning of every year or quarter and say, hey, this is where we stand at right now. This is our baseline. Uh, we are able to deploy, deploy into production or go live once in every two weeks. And that's not great. That means it's slowing down our progress and hence it's also reflecting in our revenue. So in order to move our revenue, these are the things that we need to take care of. And if we're able to do, you know, have uh, X percentage of lift, like by the end of this quarter, that means we are, we are successful. That's how you predict it. And uh, in a, in a product-based scenario where you're like, if you're able to successfully you know, ship five or six features uh, by the end of this quarter without affecting any of our business metrics, then I would call the project successful. Uh, sometimes you want to measure it. If it's a brand new product, you want to measure it in terms of the number of bookings you get, what kind of revenue you're generating, and you want to measure uh, the availability of your product. Is it available for, for the users like 99% of the time? What is the downtime you have? You know, those kind of things. This is how you would go about defining the metrics. Okay, Tani posts, if you're looking for product related internship, you could post and ask. Uh, is a pretty helpful community, women in product. Thank you. Um, I guess one of the questions for you and even Avery, when it comes to the mindset of, um, you know, being a TPM, like, are there individuals that you should be following or things that you should read? Because obviously you don't wake up one morning and you're thinking like a TPM, right? Yeah. Like, obviously there are some things that's even personal, a personal story. I build and I create things, right? Like this is what I do at the need to But then I'm not the most risk aware person. I'm mm -hmm. like agile and we're going to get this done. Right. But mm -hmm. obviously there's another layer of being um, deliberate and thoughtful about um, your product. Um, so I, I don't know if you have any readings or, or links and I'll probably just email both of y'all later, but what can we start looking at to think along the lines of a TPM? 
So I would suggest following folks who are at the senior level, uh, who work as a director or VP of orgs, uh, following those folks who have been in TPM for the last 20 years. And I have reached out to them previously and they are more than happy to chat and uh, give us a little bit more information. And I know that there are meetups that happen for TPMs uh, across US. So it'll be great if you can join them and network with other folks. And I know a lot of companies have uh, TPM hiring events where they invite TPMs for a networking session. They have a panelist set up and they're able to talk about things because sometimes a definition of TPM role changes from org to org. Sometimes they want you to be more technical. Sometimes they want you to be more uh, business and strategy oriented. So if you, it helps for you to get a feel of where you want to be and what is the right fit for you by attending these events. Yeah, I, I agree with um, what she said. I think that it does depend if you're going to be a technical program manager, even a technical project manager, you know, what, what it is, what your, what type of the projects are, right? So, um, and when you look at the risk management and what the risk might be for a specific function, it could really change drastically. Um, so, you know, at Bloomberg, a lot of what we do and because of, you know, who we work with, the, the biggest things that we are concerned about is stability, right? Making sure that our projects are, our product is, is online and accessible for the people that need it, you know, when they're training, when they're using um, the terminal, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so a lot of the risks that we look at in terms of the network and, and that kind of stuff is, okay, so what's the stability? Um, you know, is there, uh, do we have the uh, DR, disaster recovery, that kind of stuff? Um, and so those are, those are the kinds of risks that we look at. Um, and it's really about teasing it out with each of the, um, I think the, the technical individuals that you're working with. So if somebody owns a specific product suite, right, what are their concerns that they have? Um, and then making sure that that's addressed in the, um, the acceptance criteria. So it might not necessarily be a, um, an explicit business need, but it is something that you want to make sure you're adding into your user stories, right? As a user, I need to X so that I can Y, you know, and putting that as part of the acceptance criteria for the project. All right, y'all. So um, definitely, um, I think we have both of y'all email addresses. I really appreciate y'all time. Um, and yeah, I probably will have to ping y'all both about this because I think this is where we're going a lot like I feel like the career opportunities in this field in particular is growing because people are just starting to realize the importance of having someone who could organize direct and speak the, the language of multiple departments um, so thank you y'all um, just gonna say um, you know really think about what other careers are there and really paying our um, speakers because they obviously want to engage and make sure that y'all get into this field.